Kid Rock was on Joe Rogan's podcast, and Kid Rock, of course, is a you know well-known political theorist. He is somebody who has gotten involved in politics, but he's most known for his rap rock country songs, like trying to place an exact genre on Kid Rock when he goes across different genre lines quite frequently in his music is very difficult uh but he has sung a lot of rap rock country in these like types of genres in this area of music and uh we've kind of poked fun at, uh, at kid rock and his music and his lyrics before um what, what was that lyric in his one song um we don't call it statutory we call it mandatory i don't i don't even want to go back into it you can go back and check out some old main channel dylan burns tv uh, videos that we've published if you want to check that out but today we're going to be watching Kid Rock go on the Joe Rogan podcast to not talk about you know his views on the age of consent uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the war between Israel Hamas and those caught in between and Kid Rock decided to go on Joe Rogan's podcast and just kind of casually advocate for murdering tens of thousands of civilians if the war is not to end tomorrow I don't yeah. disagree with what Israel's doing. It's like they should just go in there and be like, you know what? We want our hostages back. If we don't have them back, clock starts now in fucking 24 hours. We're going to start bombing motherfuckers and killing fucking civilians. 30, 40,000 a fucking time. So you civilians better fucking pack up and fucking get these fucking motherfuckers and tell you you go against Hamas. You fucking go against them. We're not playing fucking games with you. But that's yeah, the, the only thing people understand. This is what happened armed. in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But the problem is, okay, there's, oh man, there's a bunch of stuff I'm going to break down here. And I'm going to get back to why I think this type of stuff has been normalized and how this can be just come off his tongue so easily. And it's not just a recent phenomenon, but I wanted to talk about something that could have been a contributing factor from recent politics. Um, but the first thing is Nagasaki and Hiroshima did not cause the people of Japan to turn against their government in revolt. That is not what Nagasaki and Hiroshima did. The war did not end against Japan because we dropped two nukes and the Japanese people said, oh no, overthrow the monarchy now. The Japanese people, while I'm not saying that you could, you know, it was impossible to push them to a point where they might do something like that, right? We'll, we can never know. It's non-falsifiable. It's a, you know, a timeline we never went down. The reason the war ended was because we were facing the Japanese with such untold devastation that the War Council, after much division, after the dropping of the second atomic bomb, the threat of Soviets, uh, the Soviet Union entering the war and them already now having entered the war and invading uh, parts of Asia that the Japanese uh, army was already fighting in and occupied territories, uh, it led to them relenting because they could see the writing on the wall, not to some big reverberation and revolt by the Japanese people. Mind you also that when we're talking about an organization like Hamas, who brings its roots down to the Muslim Brotherhood, which has been known to cross borders. Hamas has operatives in nations like Qatar and all around the world. They're an organization that, if they even lost all of their territorial holdings, would not completely evaporate, might be able to take a, a different type of warfare, an asymmetric style of warfare, either in Gaza or try to take the fight internationally. Whereas I don't think the Japanese imperial family could do that as much. Um, I don't think that was possible. Not to mention the amount of untold devastation and damage uh, and destruction that was at least, even if it wasn't morally correct, seemed to be morally permissible by people like Curtis LeMay and other military commanders who openly said that their bombing of Japan, if they were on the other side of the war, if they had ended up losing, that he'd be convicted as a war criminal for his deliberate targeting of highly dense populated cities in an effort to undermine the Japanese war machine. Again, like all this, like the bombing of Japan and the way we did was not just to like destroy the Japanese civilian population to the point where they'd overthrow. It was because the Japanese buildings uh, were heavily uh, intertwined with military industry. And people like Curtis LeMay made the decision that if we just annihilated all these cities, then therefore we would annihilate their ability to get war. It wasn't based upon an idea that we'd eventually turn 
the Japanese people necessarily against the, the regime. It wasn't that we completely discounted it and said it was impossible. It was just betting your war goals on the uh, feelings of the enemy population is very risky. And what if you end up doing this and then you just end up killing 300,000 people and they don't surrender? Then all you did is kill 300,000 people worse in this situation. But that was a lot to what he just said. And I have more to say later, but just, you know, when I just don't like the comparisons. Boom! Just wiped out. They're like, oh, yes, we don't have Supreme Leader anymore. We did not know you had such big bombs. Yeah, but everybody has big bombs now. The problem is you use a big... Is that really the problem? Is that the problem? The the Palestinians just haven't realized how big the bomb that the Israelis have? If the Israelis simply occupied Gaza and they sat down all the Palestinians, they're like, okay, I don't think you guys understand. And the Palestinians are like, no, we hate you. Fuck you. Fuck you, Israel. And then Israel's like, no, no you don't understand. It's like, no, we do understand. Screw you. It's like, no, no, here's normal bomb. Yeah, that's a 155 millimeter shell. We've hit our cities with that. And here's a JDAM. Oh. Oh my, well, never mind. I, 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 I guess I'm Israeli now. I, it's not, it's, just, it's not that simple. It's not that you can't just bomb, you can just bomb them into psychological submission just in a, in a, under the expectations that they'll cave to your demands. Big bomb. I mean, they tried this during World War II, it didn't succeed. Um, you set a precedent that they can use a big bomb. They don't have one. Well, they don't, but their allies do. Then we that's the real the fuck problem. Out of them, someone's gonna learn. Yeah, but you gotta, that, you gotta get your ass beat hard enough. Uh, you can't just nuclear bomb people. I you didn't say nuke them. nuclear bomb you back. No, I didn't say okay, nuke you them. said Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I thought you meant it like no, that. no. I was saying that just the the brute force of strength. Okay. You, ah, sorry, he was being much more reasonable. Used in those. Yeah, but conflicts. even even a conventional bombing campaign. If you want to do that somewhere, they can do that to your place. And this is what we have to Fuck avoid. Fuck around and find out? Yeah, <laughs> until... Wait, but it's not a question of even fuck around and find out, right? Because what, what, what's the rule? That if... if, if what, what would be the rule? God, so Hamas fucked around, so the Palestinian people are going to find out. How do we establish that standard on the international stage? I just want to know. Just a fuck around, find out standard. How do you make it so only the people that you feel are deserving of the fuck around, find out standard, and not just those that are weaker are the ones that would end up, you know, finding out? Well, someone launches nukes. And then we have a, a and we our civilization is over. The world, as you know it, ceases to exist. There is no more electricity. Whatever tools. Hey, it's this part. Thanks for the tier one. Been enjoying your content, Dylan. Thank you. You have or things you find, and a small percentage of us are going to make it to breed and then make new kids. I like how you said go us. out into the world. I like how you there's said very it. few people that are going to live, man. Well, it's like me and you could probably. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I have chickens, too. <laughs> I have elk in the freezer, too. But you that freezer's not going to stay gun, on. You can gut an elk. I can gut an elk. <laughs> yeah. But that freezer's not going to stay on. So I'm going to lose most of my meat. Uh, you, unless I turn it into jerky. You're going to have to do something to figure out how to fucking get by jerky. because the world is going to be different. You know, you're not going to have any electricity forever. For the rest of your life, there'll be no electricity. Just throwing paint at the ball, wall, but what if we empower the people of Palestine who are could be good people? I don't know. Just what, Dude, how did he go from, like, just kill him? You know, I think Palestinians, you know, they might be, they might be not bad cats after all. You know, they might just be like you and me at the end of the day. Actually, I'm, you know... At the end of the day, we're all human. But how do you make this transition in under two minutes? Like, oh, empower the Palestinian people. So it'd be so his plan is bomb them, bomb them, bomb them to a point where they understand that if they do not overthrow their own government, then they will be continue to be bombed into annihilation. And if that succeeds, then you empower them. Assuming, of course, success that we'd be completely unsure of. Last I checked, most of these motherfuckers hate us. But and I'm not saying all the people do. There's probably 
a lot that don't. Just like in Iran, the population is, you know, because of the Iraq war, there there's so many under 50 there. That's like the majority. The thing is, them. these guys don't have access to other information outside of where they live. And then on top fucking of that, Elon, being send run. the Starlink. We'll send them some fucking guns. Uh, fucking let's go. The problem. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Let's look. Because of the Iraq war, there's so many under 50 there. That's like the majority. And then. Joe says is, these guys don't have access to other information outside of where they live. And then on top fucking of that, Elon, being send the Starlink. We'll send them some fucking guns. OK, so let's I want to figure out. I got to get to the bottom of the Kid Rock foreign policy school. So Kid Rock's solution to the Israel Hamas war and the in the, in the Israeli occupation of Palestinian lands is bomb them and explicitly bomb the civilians. Then he pivots over to the Iranian society, of course, deep knowledge of Iranian society, Kidrock. He pivots over to Iran, and his solution for Iran is to flood the country with guns under the auspices that Starlink, social media, I guess just the freedom of information, and a bunch of machine guns are going to bring down the Ayatollah. You remember that like weird uh, botched like uh, like PMC attempt to overthrow Maduro? It was a complete disaster attempt to overthrow Venezuela. I feel like Operation Gideon and stuff like this would be every single day of a Kid Rock White House. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, Fuck, let's go. <laughs> the problem is most of them would be so opposed to Israel that they would want to use those guns to go attack Israel. Well, then we've, especially now we, now. Have, now we have due reason to fuck them all up. Yeah, but if you think about you're a kid and you don't know why there's a conflict between Palestine and Israel it's and you're living war. in Palestine and then they start bombing it's and then war. they kill your mom. It's yeah, but you didn't do, war. but right, but you didn't do anything. It sounds like Bud Light. And then you get <laughs> guns. <laughs> what? What? Is he just this devoid of any like human compassion for anyone on the other side? Is this devoid of human compassion? Look, I don't want to like get weird or anything. I don't want to get like to just start like comparing and contrasting. But at the end of the day, the idea of like a drone hitting a house in Russia and it kills a bunch of civilians, like that, like no matter like how bitter I get, I never want to get to a point where I'm like, yeah, that's a good thing or dismissive, like poof. Just completely like I don't care. It's the enemy. It's war. It is what it is. That doesn't mean like you you pretend that like civilian casualties aren't a part of war. Has but you don't you don't dismiss it as just like eh. to run for Congress. God help us all. There's a reason why war should uh, certainly not be the first result. Anyway, thank you for the five dollars. I appreciate it. Maga wants him to run for Congress. No, you'd be a great. Be great secretary of state or you know he'd be a great i hope he's chair of the foreign affairs committee for the republicans you're going to go want to attack people you're going to want to avenge them you're going to want to join whatever group whatever so why did world group. war ii end well why did world war ii start checkmate you got a dude who's <laughs> fucking methed up <laughs> you got a, a adolf hitler methed up charismatic dude that wants to take over the world that's how it started you know, so, how did it end? Nuclear bombs. But it also ended through attrition. You know, at the end of it, like the, the devastation on both sides was so horrible. Terrible. But it, where was the end? What was, what was Hiroshima the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. No, but yeah. what was the alternative? Well, that's that case. You know, the thing about whenever you're bombing cities, like what you're What if that you're was chilling. your house? What if that was your house? Let's call your house Israel. And okay. Okay, everybody. Call, okay. Hello, Israel. Okay, let's analogy. And your neighbors are Palestine. <laughs> Goddamn Palestine! Leaving their fucking garbage cans in my lawn. Okay. Those motherfuckers are. You got a family of four. They come over and fucking take out two of them in the fucking worst way. Are you really gonna like worry about like what type of force you're using at your neighbors? No, you definitely. Well, the wouldn't. wife didn't have anything to do with it. We got to make sure she's okay and get some aid. This and there's like, no, I'm sorry, man. This is fucking war. It's terrible. It's the worst thing. Okay, I've so okay, I I'm gonna let this simmer for a bit, but I'm gonna take this back to some previous political commentary you've had a few years ago that I'm gonna connect this to to see 
like a like a strain we're we're on right now. Earth. I'm a peaceful man. Peaceful, right, but you're not supposed peaceful. to pick civilian targets. That's actually a you war can't crime. fight war like that. When but you, you're not supposed to pick civilian, in civilian targets. targets. They are. So that's where like the... yeah. But wait, wait. Okay. Before you even get into like the nuance of like proportional damage and how many, like if there's so 20 ISIS commandos and like one of them brought their daughter, could you take them all out? Like before you get into any questions of that or even trying to compare that to the dense urban fighting and what's going on, God, he didn't say what Israel needs to do is lower it to standards of proportionality or what Israel needs to do is make it so that you know they're they're targeting more just targets generally what he said is they need to specifically target civilians with the intent of reaping a high civilian death toll so that the death toll would be so high and by the way 30 to 40,000 is like a whole percentage point of the population so lose like a percentage point of the of the Palestinian population every day until they surrender no, I don't think that's comparable to a conversation about proportional damage. No, I, I don't think that's comparable at all. Hey, thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. The They're Mossad in hospitals. They got trenches hospitals. fucking underneath. They got operation yeah. centers. They, they killed those good And all we can do is go day. by the reporting. Like, you know, I get it. But mm -hmm. at some point, you got to believe something, right? No, I definitely do. They definitely seem to be doing that. But also, if you're a person who's born in Palestine, you're fucked. You're under their control. It's not yeah. your fault. And By we, birth, you're fucked. Yeah, but that those aren't our enemy. And the, the the thing is, like what you were saying, get them, get them, cell phones, get them the internet, get them armed. If you get them armed, they're not okay. So he wasn't talking about arming the Iranians. So he wants to bomb the Palestinians and then smuggle Very them weapons. Okay. A tier two subscription. Got you. Thank you, Sir, Sir Red Riot. I'm sorry, I was distracted by the genius of Kid Rock from the splendor of your tier two sub, but I do appreciate the splendor of your tier two sub anyway. I'm gonna really know how to use it. They're gonna also, unless Very they're true. joining those military groups, and then they're also gonna be indoctrinated at a young age by those groups, I would imagine, especially now with well, all the bombing that's been happening. You just came in Gaza. full circle to my point. I'm not opposed there's to no what you're saying. There's no alternative. I'm not opposed to what you're saying. He said to directly target civilians, Joe. You even said it was a war crime. I'm not saying that I'm opposed to what you're saying. What I'm saying is that, you know, what you're saying is, like, could be taken as, like, a callous thing. To well, no, wait, wait, uh, Joe. He's, this isn't a conversation about proportionality, Joe. He said target the civilians. He was advocating for taking, like, a whole percentage point of the Palestinian population every day. Like that, it's just gonna have to be how it is that we have to kill women and children. Yeah. I, I wish there was an alternative. Uh, it, honestly, it doesn't sound like he's trying that hard. Was gonna drive to DC this weekend to see my sis and go to the rally, but I wow. got a flat tire, and one of my besties had to get a liver transplant. Have some money I saved staying home. Congrats on 100,000 followers! Thank you so much, Bop and Wap. What a name! I appreciate, I appreciate it. A name that makes mom proud. Thank you for the forty dollars. I got I got the Ukraine money. Now you can truly say that they've grifted off of the Ukrainian cause. You can put that on your newspaper headlines. Thank you for the forty dollars, buddy. I do appreciate it. Man, generous chat today. I don't know what's in the water. Well, and I don't know everything on this. By the I way, I don't know everything on this either. But, but, I, but I, I doubt I do they're know. sitting up in, in. Dude, I love the. I don't know. I don't know everything about this. Bomb them. Bomb them, bomb them again, annihilate them, a, per a percentage p point off their population every day, target civilians. I don't really know much about this war. And, you know, Congress going like, hey, we better listen real close to Kid Rock. He's got this figured out. I'm just not willing to accept that the only way human beings can resolve things in 2024 is to bomb each other out of existence. Oh, I wish, I, fuck, believe me. It's just the whole thing is so fucked. The whole the but whole reality Palestine, sets it. Israel thing is so fucked. Man, uh, I think Joe did okay. Um, I think he did okay in the first half. I would even go as far to say he did okay in the two thirds of it. Uh, but towards the end, when like Kid Rock was like going like, "Oh no, it's not nuclear," and you know, yeah, like if it seemed like Kid Rock like backed off a bit, and Joe Rogan just kind of let it go. 
But I feel like, you know, Joe Rogan has dug his heels in on topics before. I've seen Joe Rogan go ham, go ham on Hunter Alvalone over the issue of marijuana legalization. And hey, dude, I agree with Joe Rogan. I was like in the, I was in like the, like the rafters going, oh, yeah. I was like 100% on board with that. And so I don't know why he wouldn't take the opportunity here as somebody who's like, oh, we got to negotiate with each other. Because it'd be one thing if he was talking about proportionality and then you'd have to get into, but he's just straight. It's not even like, 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 oh, we got to find the nuance here. He's just target the civilians. You know, I think uh, he could have dug his heels in a little harder. My goodness, Kid Rock. People want him to run for Congress. Fascinating.